Hey everybody and welcome back to another One Everything Wednesday's replacement series, the Patron Pile Edition series. We're back again with three mystery booster convention edition booster packs. That's right. Here we are. Uh, and there's, uh, you know, Urza or maybe, I don't know, Urza's brother or I don't know, listen, or cousin, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, disregard commons, acquire legacy foils. That's how we do. You can see there's a number of signatures on here. If you're unfamiliar with LRR, I suggest you go check them out. Great group of folks over there. Extremely amazing, very friendly, very welcoming. Go check them out. Say hi. We got a portent. Look at that. That's cool art on portent. I don't think I've ever seen that portent art before. Um, so very cool. Lots of good stuff in these packs. If you're unfamiliar with these packs, there you go. Smash the Smithereens used to be worth uh, over a couple bucks. I don't think it is anymore, but we'll double check it. Prices will come up in the top right corner, of course, as always. Um, but, uh, these packs just have a ton of value in them. Like it's, it's, it's just absolutely absurd. The stuff that you can pull out of these packs, even just in the Wooberg order. So like our multicolor card is a sprouting Thrynax. And then we've got a jungle hollow as the colorless card for the pack. Good old cons land. And then we've got a bear cub as our M15 or older card. So there you go. And then our rare is a boom pile, boom pile, pretty hilarious little card. Very fun little thing for your uh, commander decks. A little add a little chaos to your EDH games. And then uh, because these are convention edition boosters, you get the playtest cards. So here we have a seasoned weaponsmith, which is a, a bird warrior. And I'm, yep. And it's tasty. Look how tasty it is. This creature can be attacked directly. If it's attacked, it can't block. It can't block issues that didn't attack it. Interesting. So it's kind of like a similar to like how Hearthstone does things. It's like you can choose where to send your damage. So you can choose to attack this just like a planeswalker, almost similar to that. I guess it's kind of weird, but also interesting. Interesting. I don't think they've done that type of thing with other uh, cards out of the out of the playtest area, right? Chart of course used to be over a dollar. Don't know if it still is. Again, like I said, prices will come up in the top right corner. We definitely cover the price for sure of the cards that in the M15 or older, the uh, rare and the uh, playtest card get covered for sure. The uh, the Wooberg order sometimes we don't really do prices for them if they're you know basically we only cover them if they're over a dollar. So that's why you'll see us kind of plowing through these cards and not really showing prices in the top right. Uh, for anything notable cards, right? So like, here you go. For instance, a Whisper Silk Cloak, that's over a dollar for sure. It's like a $3 uncommon, I think. And that's coming out of our Wooberg. This is our colorless slot. So that's pretty good. Then our M15 or older is Enchanted Evening. Not a bad little one. All permanents are enchantments in addition to their other types. We'll take it. Uh, it's a pretty neat little card. And then we got Sudden Demise as the rare. And choose a color. Sudden Demise deals X damage to the, each creature of the chosen color. Very cool. And then our... Uh, Play this card is a you're in command. Little sorcery makes uh you know choose target creature you own and control. That creature becomes your commander. Any other commander, uh any other commander that you have no longer your commander. So there you go. Uh, the creature starts with a commander tax of zero. So there it is. Decommission, not a bad little removal spell. We got a lunar uh, lunark uh, mantle, uh fleeting distraction. Uh, Durger Nemesis, Shambling Goblin, March of the Drowned. Man, I can't wait to draft this set, let me tell you. I have a box set aside for me and my friends to draft this once we can get back together safely and everyone feels, feels comfortable getting back together in person. I'm so excited to draft this set once we get a chance to do so. We've got a Might of the Masses. What was the other one there? Sorry, Talons of the Wildwood. And we've got a Hammer Dropper, good old Hammer Dropper. Five to show, I show you Hammer. Hey, we got a great furnace. Now, the artifact lands have been climbing up recently as well because artifact lands are becoming more important these days uh, again, uh, even in EDH. So there you go. I'll double check it. Don't know if it's over a dollar. I know that there's like there's certain ones that are higher. I think it's the plains and the island that are the two highest ones. And then I think all the other ones are kind of like mm, creeping up around that dollar. We got chatter, uh, chatter of the squirrel as our uh, M15 or no, oh, that's our yeah, our M15 or older card. Um, we got a Night Howler as our rare. Well, you know, every week can't be a winner, right? And then we've got a Frenemy of the Guild Pack as our playtest card. So, I mean, I don't know if we hit too many things worth a whole heck. The Enchanted Evening seems really good. I don't know what the price of this is, but I'm sure it's not 
terrible. Um, but uh, the boom pile, maybe a couple bucks. Whisper Silk Cloak for sure. Bear Cub, I think, is like a dollar or two. Um, Night Howler, I don't think, really worth anything at the moment. Maybe it's come up a bit, but I don't know. Anyway, prices will have come up in the top right corner. Not every week can be a, a, a winner of a week, right? I mean, you're going to obviously always get packs that... And this is why you should never buy packs, FYI. Like this reason right here. It's like if you're opening packs for value, don't don't open packs. You should be you should be buying the singles you want always. If there's that singles that you're looking for, of course, always do that first because that's definitely way more important and you'll definitely get the cards you want that way as opposed to opening packs and just hoping for the hope. Now I open the packs because I enjoy it. And if you enjoy it, that you know, open packs if you want, right? This is the thing is if you enjoy the opening pack experience, do it. If you don't, buy the singles. That's it. If you want to be efficient with your money, buy the singles. That's the easiest way to put things uh, simply. Thanks so much, everyone, for watching. Have yourselves a wonderful day. And as always, may your pulls ever be better.